All right, Alexander, let's talk about the ultimatum issued by the Russian uh, foreign ministry. From what I understand, they issued this ultimatum to Ukraine via Belarus. And basically what the Russian foreign ministry is, uh, is telling Ukraine is that they want the terrorists, the suspected terrorists, uh, extradited to Russia. Uh, no names have been given, but except for one. One name has been revealed, and that is of the SBU head, Vasily Malyuk, who has been very low profile over the, the two years of this conflict. But for some reason last week, I don't know why, but for some reason this guy decided to, to not be so low profile and to start to talk about all of the, all of the operations that, uh, that have been taking place against Russia, against the, the Kerch Bridge. Uh, hinting at the fact that he was, uh, his SBU office was behind these operations. I don't think he came out explicitly and said the SBU, um, was, was conducting terrorist operations in Russia or was behind the, the attacks on Kirch Bridge, but his statement almost, almost revealed that it was the SBU. I mean, it was, it was obvious that he wanted to take credit for these operations. I don't know why he decided to, to come out with these statements at this time, given that you just had the uh, the terrorist attack in Moscow. But anyway, we have uh, we have one name that the Russians want extradited to Russia. We have uh, other people that they're asking for to be extradited to Russia. Uh, Ukraine is obviously going to ignore this, and um, we predicted this. Actually, you said in a video last week that uh, this is exactly the process that Russia will uh, will take in uh, in this investigation so here we are we have the the first warning to, to uh, ukraine extradite these people exactly this is the first warning because it must be made clear that we are going to have a lot more of them and um the russians what they're basically saying in this statement is look it's not any longer controversial that ukraine has carried out terrorist activities in ukraine in russia They've admitted it. Their own chief, their own SBU person has admitted it. So given that that is so, given that this is in, indisputably true, we have this admission from the Ukrainians, from the head of the SBU, Mr. Malyuk. Well, the only correct and proper thing to do is to hand him over and all of the other people who were connected to this. And we've got all the relevant uh, um, um, treaties and um international law enactments which require the handing over of terrorists and the um, statement from the foreign ministry the russian foreign ministry says that every country in the world is duty bound to assist in the fight against terrorism and that of course must include ukraine but by implication it also includes ukraine's western sponsors and um, that, I think, is, as I said, it's not an openly stated message, but if you think carefully and as you read the statement, you can see that. And we, we can probably start to see messages also coming before long to Washington, London, Brussels, Berlin, asking, you know, we need these people. Provide us with information, please. We need to have them. We need to arrest them. We need to have them brought to Russia to be put to trial there. So this is not yet, and now this is an important thing to say, it's not yet specifically about Crocus City Hall or the attack on Crocus City Hall, but it is clearly connected to it. It is clearly preparing the ground for the next, for you know, a next in a series of um similar demands and sooner or later i'm confident given the you know the, the, what we're hearing from moscow they will link um, they will they will include people they say are responsible for the crocus city hall attack in these demands and of course if the demands are not met then as i said in, as i said in that um, video clip that you mentioned. There are there are historic precedents. The United States set one um, over Osama bin Laden, for example. There are precedents. 
whereby a country that has been the target of terrorist violence can say, look, if you do not hand this person over, this active terrorist who is engaging in terrorist acts against our country, if you do not hand it over, then that, as far as we're concerned, constitutes an act of war by you, and we will take military action in order to bring these terrorists to account. And, uh, you know, so we are heading towards a, a major escalation, and the Russians have taken the first big step in that direction. Yeah, but what, what does that mean exactly? I mean, the, the United States, for example, they're going to, to say that this is Russian disinformation. Don't believe anything the, anything the Russians say. The Europeans, uh, the UK, they're all going to going to say this line. They're going to say they're going to be like, okay, well, you know, Russia doesn't have the evidence, or Ukraine has nothing to do with this. Uh, Russia is just trying to find an excuse to attack Ukraine. There, there already is there already is a conflict. There already is a war. So so what is what is this step? What is this action actually accomplish? Right. I mean, R- Russia R- will Russia declare war on, on, on right. Ukraine? Is that is that Very possible? Good Very good question. Let, let let's take a few steps back because we're not there yet. Now, um, you're absolutely correct. Whatever the Russians say about Crocus City Hall, whatever evidence they produce, the West will say that it isn't evidence that it's either fabricated or that it's meaningless. That Ukraine is totally innocent of this attack, that it is ISIS and, or ISIS-K, and that that's the full and complete and total end of the story. That is that is what they will say. But the Russians have been really careful to say that Focus City Hall is only the last in a series of big terrorist attacks. And they've listed some of them. You know, they mentioned Daria Dugina, they mentioned Tatarsky, they mentioned the Crimean Bridge. And of course, we now have this utterly idiotic, uh, um, incredibly stupid admission from uh, Maliuk um, that, yes, it was indeed the Ukrainians who carried them out. Now, the Russians can say this is terrorism. They can also point to that article that appeared a few weeks ago in the New York Times, which basically tells us the same thing. That article, by the way, implicates Budanov, who is the head of the military intelligence agency. These are not acceptable acts by the um, Ukrainian government. Attacks like this on civilians, on Russian territory. They can point. They point out that the attack on the Kerch Bridge, the explosion there, killed civilians, which they did. So if they can, if the Americans come back and say, you know, there's nothing here, Crocus City Hall, entirely ISIS or ISIS K, the Russians can say, well, what are you saying about all of these other all of these other attacks? And if it goes, for example, to the UN Security Council, the Russians can say that to the other countries there, to, uh, in the UN. They say, look, the Americans say Ukraine is not involved in terrorism, but they clearly were because we have admissions to that effect in the American media, and we got an admission to that effect from the head of Ukraine's biggest intelligence and counterintelligence agency. So given that this is so, we are fully within our rights to demand the extradition to our country or of these people. Now, there isn't any real counter to this because of what first the Americans have tried to distance themselves from what the Ukrainians have been doing and what Maliuk himself has done. Now, why Maliuk did that, going back to your earlier question, is really very mysterious. It, it does beg a lot of questions. Did he do it because he's jealous of the attention Budanov has been getting? That's one possibility. Could it be that he did it because he's trying to implicate Budanov? He's saying, look, he's in effect saying, um, yeah, we did it. We, Ukraine, did that. Um, And, of course, he knows that it's Budanov who did this, and he's basically setting up Budanov in some way. That's another possibility. Is it 
that he's jealous of Budanov. He wants to say, look, Budanov is taking all the credit, but it's we, the SBU, who have done the really, you know, the really tough, hard things. It was we who planted the bomb on the Kerch Bridge. It was we who killed Tatarsky and Dugina and all of the others. Or is he frightened? Is this the action of a desperate and scared man? Croker City Hall had just happened. Um, I, I don't remember now whether the Zircon missile strike on the SBU building happened before or after Maliuk spoke, but already it was clear that the Russians were coming after him and others. Was he frightened and scared? And was this the panic-stricken, ill-thought-out response of a frightened man? I don't know. But whatever it was, it's achieved exactly what the Russians need. It's implicated Ukraine directly in terrorism. I mean, you, you can't argue with the words of the head of Ukraine's biggest and most important intelligence and counterintelligence agency. Now, how does this affect the war? Well, it can affect the war because at the moment the Russians are still conducting it as a special military operation. Putin spoke recently about how the war is basically about defending Russian citizens in Russian on Russian territory, but if, for example, you want to go deeper into Ukraine, if you want to cross the Dnieper, take Kiev, advance further west, you now have the legal justification for doing that. You could say Ukraine is um, hosting terrorists. In fact, it has terrorists within its own government. And um, that gives us the perfect right to go after these terrorists Wherever they are, remember Putin's famous words right back after he was appointed acting prime minister by Boris Yeltsin in 1999, that we'll go, we'll, we'll hunt the terrorists wherever they are. If they hide in a, you know, a water closet, we'll go after them there. We will go wherever they go, wherever they hide, we will chase them and track them down. That's what they can now say. So until we get these people, until we get Budanov and Maliuk and all of the others, we have no reason now to stop. That is our right. It's our right under international law. We are defending ourselves. And that's, I think, where the ultimatums will come. Yeah, and I think that uh, if Russia does do that, if we get to that point, Russia doesn't, doesn't have to fear any type of, uh, of pushback from from BRICS or any of the other uh, countries of the global south, because they'll say, yeah, Russia's well within their rights. Now that they've created the case, they presented the case that there are terrorists um, in Ukraine, uh, Russia's well within their rights to go after them. However, they see fit where in the past, if if Russia was going to, to, to go after these high level officials, perhaps China or India would, would be like, just slow down. Don't don't send a Zircon into into the SBU headquarters. Don't go after these high level officials or these high level government uh, administrators. Or, or, that's, or send that's troops, going a little too far now. Or send or yeah. send troops across the Dnieper, uh, uh, yeah. taking Kiev, advancing to Lviv, doing all those kinds of things. But you know, Modi, who hates terrorism for obvious reasons, India is a major target of terrorism. You have a little lot more understanding and sympathy with what Putin is doing. If Putin can come along and tell him convincingly, look, the Ukrainians are quite openly talking about the fact that they're committing terrorism against us. What are we supposed to do? Simply sit, sit stand back and let it happen? We've asked the Ukrainians to hand over these people. We know who they are. Now, instead of handing them over, they're protecting them. And that gives us the right to uh, go after them. Bear in mind the point I always make, that sending an armed man across a country's border is a classic act of war. Going all the, you know, it's been a, established as an act of war since forever. So um, Putin has just been given 
very, very powerful legal rights if he wants to exercise them, uh, which he will, by the way. And otherwise he wouldn't have gone down the route that he's now going. And, of course, Croker City Hall is coming. What we've just seen is just the opening. Yeah, they're they're building the case. They're making the case. They're no no the doubt case. about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, in the, metho th in there the could... methodical way that they always do. Yeah, there could be another another reason why Maliuk, because it's really interesting that the guy decided to speak at the time. He did decide to speak. He's been quiet for two years. Uh, another reason that maybe he came out and, and said the things that he said is because he's he believes that the collective West is going to to re to reward him, protect him, and reward him. That so, so maybe that... his his thinking was, you know, if if I if I come out and say these things, then uh, then I'm going to fall into the protection of uh, of the United States, which is a common uh, thought that a lot of the Ukrainian officials uh, have. Uh, a, a lot of the, a lot of the European officials as uh, as well. They all, they all have this belief that the United States will protect them and save them from anything that uh, that comes their way. And um, I think in this instance, at least with the Ukrainian officials. I don't think there's much that uh, the U.S. could do if Russia starts to go after them. Well, absolutely. But I think there might also be an element of blackmail here <laughs> in the sense that uh, Maliuk might be saying to his friends in the West and his friends in Washington, look, we did, you know, we, it's, it's well known that we did all of these things. If the Russians come after me and come after others of my friends and buddies in Ukraine who were involved in these dark things, well, we know what role you had and we're no you know we're not going to simply set you know take the rap by ourselves <laughs> will implicate you as well so just 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 bear that in mind because certainly some western countries have been neck deep and an awful lot of what ukraine has been up to um we saw that with the new york times article a couple of weeks ago yeah that's why if you're the biden white house uh, just a final thought that's why if you're the biden white house you you, you, you ditch Ukraine. You, you, the, the, this is, to me, this is another opportunity for Sullivan and Blinken to get an, to get an exit out of Ukraine. Well, they're not going to do it, though. But it, I agree. It, it I really mean, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's another way for them to say, you know, we warned them many times. And to be fair, the New York Times articles and the Washington Post articles do say that, that the three-letter agencies in the United States – did tell the Ukraine intel services not to not to organize operations inside of Russia. The articles do say that. This is a way for Sullivan and Blinken to to say, you know, uh, there's there's nothing we could do with Ukraine anymore. They they've gone rogue. They've gone rogue, and and we had nothing to do with anything. There's there's, there's not much more we can do. It's time to to drop this thing. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe there is that, that possibility if they play their cards right, but they won't do it. They won't do it, but you know, there, there is an off ramp here for them. Absolutely. If they wanted to do it, uh, if they wanted to do it, but it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen under this administration. They're too invested in this project to pull away. I mean, they're obsessed by it and they won't let it go. And the president himself is obsessive about this issue. So he won't let it go either. All right. Uh, anything else with this story? We'll, we'll wrap it up. No, it's an interesting story, but, you know, it is, it is, again, a good example of the very legalistic and careful way in which the Russians approach these things. And the thing to understand, one thing to say about the Russians is that their foreign ministry does appear to have a very, very powerful legal team working for them. I mean, you know, they, they think very hard um, in this way, and of course, they've got they've got the legal law on their side. Sometimes I have to say the Russians, especially the foreign ministry, does um, does remind me, uh, you know, of a sort of very very big law firm, <laughs> which uh, knows how to sort of maneuver around and work positions so that it's able to attach to particular laws and statutes and things of that kind in order to advance its in, you know its objectives and that's what we see it's it's again very methodical very carefully 
constructed and thought out. There's clearly been a, a lot of, ban you know, um, discussion and talking through of this in Moscow. This does not look like an improvised statement at all. And it's something which um, Western foreign ministries, of course, are hopeless at nowadays. Yeah, it also highlights how it was uh, very stupid for the Biden White House to come out right away and and talk about ISIS-K and Ukraine had nothing to do with this. I thought it was just a dumb, dumb comment. It, it was absolutely stupid. I completely agree. I mean, I, I mean, as you rightly said, what they should have done is uh, um, uh, offer their massive condolences and offer cooperation. Yeah, and just keep quiet about who you think did it or or, or how it happened. Just. Just keep quiet. They, they always have this 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 need to to talk to to give to give up more information than necessary. You see it in Malyuk's case. You saw it in the Biden White House's case. They just can't shut up, which is the exact opposite. You saw it in the counteroffensive, the Great Spring counteroffensive. You know, it's it's the exact opposite of how Russia operates, how the collective West operates, and Ukraine is the exact opposite of how of how Russia operates. Where they keep Absolutely everything correct. quiet. This this is this is completely true. I mean, you know, if you are if you are, are a lawyer, the the thing you for you know in any kind of action, civil as well as uh, criminal, the thing you tell your client is keep your keep your mouth shut. Don't don't say more than you absolutely have to. Don't don't you know limit as maintain the strongest discipline on what you say. Of course, Western leaders just aren't like that at all anymore. I mean, they, uh, um, you know, they open their mouths and any everything comes pouring out. So the Russians know all the plans in advance. <laughs> they know all the um, schemes in advance. They then they that you know alerts them and prepares them for whatever it is that the West and Ukraine are going to do. Yeah. Exactly right. Uh, right away, the Russians understood exactly how the how the U.S. was going to play this, how the Biden White House was going to play this this uh, terrorist attack. They're going to ISIS K, okay, and um, and Ukraine had nothing to do with it. They, they revealed their cards right away, which is just doesn't make any sense. Why, why they feel like they have to divulge all this information right up front? Well, you know, anyway. partly. I mean, partly it's nerves. I mean, they were clearly rattled by what happened in Moscow. They probably worried that this, you know, they probably at some level do worry that the Ukrainians were involved in some level. And, you know, their nerves reflect, their insecurities came out in the statements that they made. But also, of course, they can't resist the temptation to show how clever they are and to try to put Putin in a spot. And it always works against them in the end. I, I agree with you, but OK, they, they have their nerves. They're panicking. Maybe, maybe the, you know, they're probably sitting there saying, my God, maybe the Ukraine's had something, Ukrainians had something to do with this. But I mean, you've got to imagine that the Biden White House has dozens, if not hundreds of lawyers on staff to tell them, slow down, don't say anything. Let's contact Kiev. Let's let's contact the CIA and the FBI. Let's contact everybody and let's see what's going on. I mean, you know, let's wait 24 hours. Let's wait 48 hours. Let's wait to see what the Russians say. I mean, they came out with a statement within a couple of hours, which to me shows that that the people that are running the White House probably didn't didn't seek any type of of, of proper consultation on, on anything within less than an hour in fact i mean they did it almost at once and no they didn't seek um advice um because of course they never seek advice they never go to experts you're absolutely right by the way i mean whatever we may say about the state of the legal system in the united states the united states has some of the best most intelligent most effective trial attorneys litigation lawyers in the world i mean it absolutely does i mean i've met some of these people robert barnes uh, is one of those people jonathan turley is one of those people uh, uh dershowitz is one of those people but i mean not just them but you know go to all the big law firms in new york and la and san francisco you'll find 
people who would give you absolutely the correct advice. But no, you know, you don't seek advice. You don't bother. You don't really go to the proper military people. You don't seek advice of the real economic specialists. <laughs> the uh, uh, By the way, the European banks are now coming forward and trying to get people to understand. Don't even touch the interests of the frozen assets that are held in Euroclear. This is a terrible idea. It could involve us in future litigation one day. But, you know, you don't consult people because experts, well, what do you need experts for? You are uh, uh, Jake Sullivan. You are a genius. Um, you know exactly how you can succeed. So you don't need advice of experts. You know, you know the answers already and you know that whatever you do is going to turn out brilliantly well, which, of course, it never does. We, we, we control the media, they say. We control the media, and the media can create the, the reality. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It, it's weakened them. It's weakened the way they think, the fact that they control yes. the media. They have so much power yes. over the media. It's weakened them in, in, in a big way. Correct. Yeah. All right, we will leave it there. The Duran.locals.com. We are on Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute, Telegram, Rockfin, and Twitter X. And go to the Duran shop and pick up some limited edition merch. Link is in the description box down below. Take care.